Okay. Yeah. A, a very warm welcome to you all um, to you. our first monthly lecture for June. We have um, the ever so wonderful Margaret Davis with us, who will be yeah. talking to us uh, under the theme of with just a few words. You touched this, but it says got um, to. No, no. So, um, oh. without further ado, I'm going to mute you all. Yes. And then I'm going to ask Margaret if she's able to unmute herself and then she can take over. Is that all right, Margaret? Yeah. Yeah, I am unmuted, don't I? Can you hear me? Unmute yourself, Margaret. She is. Yeah. Can you hear me? Then. Yes. I have unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes. No? Yes. Can you hear me? Can yes. you hear me? Yes, Margaret. Oh, that's on. Okay, you carry on. Margaret, okay. you start, please. Yeah, yeah. Can I? Okay. Yes, please. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon to you all. Uh, I'm sure you made the most of the lovely sunshine that we've had, like I have done. But I've been entering to the life six experiences of some of the members that have prompted me then to write uh, something and to share out something out of my long and interesting life. And I'd like to take you back now to the 1950s, which we were still slowly recovering from World War II with Germany. And it's all started with a casual conversation between my mother and acquaintances in the early 1950s. She loved having fish and chips in the Cozy Corner Cafe, which is at the corner of um, Inkerman Street there. And it was a time then that preparations were taking place locally for the mining that was to be the largest anthracite mine in the West, in Western Europe. Firstly, scenes one and two at Kenhydra. As it was becoming increasingly apparent that there were great demands now for a good quality anthracite smokeless fuel, which I became to use myself later on. The project was awesome, even by English standards. Work commenced at Shaft 1 and 2 in 1954 with a German company. Now, I don't know sure how to pronounce it, but I'll try. It's Sachersten Tyson's Gwenschaft of Mulheim. And later, it is called locally, and I'm sure we're all familiar with it, Tyson's, which the offices are still in trust. And Tyson's were the main mining contractors, as no other company would undertake the massive operation of constructing this new venture. Richard Inglot, who oh, I remember, he lived in New Road, but he was in charge. Now, I'm not sure what his turn was, but he was quite high up there. Local companies were engaged for the building of the compression house, the baths, the canteen, and the offices. J and P Zamit were the main building contractors. They were responsible for the main surface building. Glenn Davis, the local sheds, and Evans and Williams, the washery. And so it was engineers, electricians, and technicians that and all the personnel were employed from Germany and they needed accommodation. Single men were placed in Kenhydra Hostel and married couples needed accommodation locally. Now, the previous year, I'd got married. And we went to live in Tumble, and the contractor my husband had there was just went there. Uh, so we came back then 
to live with my parents. But my mother had offered accommodation to this couple uh, as their house had four bedrooms. And this lovely couple arrived, Ruth and Heinz Kurenbach from Essen. Neither could speak English, and my parents and myself could not speak German. But we needed to communicate one way or another. Now, for Heinz, it wasn't essential for him to spend time learning English because he was in work all day with colleagues. But Ruth, it was different. And he came home to Ruth in the evenings. But for Ruth, it was different. And she needed to communicate with us as a family and to go shopping. But so there was a great deal for her to learn. So my father spent the time then to teach her in individual items, he'd say chair, and she'd say stool, banana, and he say, she'd say banana. And she learned these individual words in English. And so using our hands and eyes and monosyllables, we learned German words while she learned um, the equivalent in English. And so we just got by with just these few words. It, but we had a great deal of laughter and interpretations. They were really funny. We had laughed a lot, as you can imagine. But there was a time then that there were a lot of tears. They would be rolling down her cheeks. And she would try to get us to understand, showing a picture of this lovely little baby to us. And we took it then and she'd say, Ich Kinder, Ich Kinder. And we thought it was her as a child. But we found out later that it wasn't. She'd left this little baby at home with her parents, Helmut, and he was 18 months old. So she was missing him dreadfully. So then, in the meantime, my husband, as I say, we worked, in, but we came back to Finetti then. And Christmas was approaching now, and the heartache was much worse then, wasn't it? You can understand. So when this would happen, my mother would always say, oh, let's go shopping. And as Ruth would say, fish and chips. And that's what, that's what she used to do. Well, then when she was going, then she'd raise herself up and she would dry her tears and they would go to the market. But this was very entertaining because the, the men were shouting out on the stalls, you know, for us to come and buy their products. And then you had this man then with the china that was juggling the dinner plates there as if they, they were, you know, pieces of cardboard. And then if we were lucky, we'd have a pair of nylon stockings from Mrs. Price in the market. And that was a great treat. And of course, the highlight of every shopping spree was to go to Corner, Cozy Corner for fish and chips. Now, in the evenings, when Heinz and myself and then my husband would come home, they'd, we'd play cards and Monopoly. Now, this was a great barrier breaker as the use of language was so limited. We went to Plagine then in the parish church in the early hours of the morning. It, it seemed to be as if it was, in, well, it was in the middle of the night on Christmas morning, Ruth and I. And we went off in the darkness and Ruth didn't understand a word of it, but she came out of there with very peaceful and I think she received a blessing. Um, and she was very, very good all over Christmas. Although it helped, that helped them to ease the longing for, as she said, his little boy, Helmut. The highlight of her stay in Tenechi was the carnival that is celebrated by the Germans during winter. And I believe it is around February. And they all dressed up in fancy dress. Admission was very exclusive. And so they stayed until spring. And she returned with Heinz to Germany to, as she said, her little boy. 
I missed Ruth so much that I cried and I hoped to see her again. But while I was so upset, my father said to me, why are you crying? He said, when Ruth goes back to Germany, she'll forget all about you, Aunt Nessie. And then I cried all the more. And Helmut came back and he stayed in the hostel then as a single person. The years came and went. Gifts were exchanged and greeting cards and Christmas cards. Although that all that could be written on them was our names and all is okay. And on one of our caravan trips abroad in the summer of 1968, the car was heating up. So in, instead of driving down to Venice, I planned to do, I had the idea, let's go back through Germany and see if we can find Essen, because I'd love to see Ruth. But my husband said, well, I don't know the address. And I don't know where, where, where she lives. I said too, but after so many years of writing the address, it was imprinted in my mind. So driving along the Autobahn now from Austria to Germany, I just prayed and I hoped that we would be on the easiest way to the city. So as we approached the sign, West Germany, we couldn't believe it. We got, I got more excited, especially when explaining to my sons the reason we were doing it. One was 11 and the other was five. And I told them then why we were going to see the Kurenbachs. But miraculously, nothing appeared to go wrong. So we simply continued to follow our noses, and there it was again in front of us, uh, Essen. Although it was a big city, the district was again in front of us, Vronhausen. We just motored all along, and it was there exactly as if we followed a map. I just couldn't believe it. But my search wasn't over yet. But where do I go from here? So we pulled in then outside a very large building and we parked there. And it appeared to be a public building. Possibly it was a town hall. But anyway, outside there was a sign, very appropriate, the Rat House. R-A-T-H-A-U-S. Although I didn't know the real meaning of it. But anyway, I went up to this big building. Uh, up the two flights of stairs breathlessly. Now, how am I going to ask this man where Bormister 53 was? So, anyway, I wrote the address on a piece of paper and I gave it to him. This blonde, burly man smiled and he pointed out to the window and he said, Da, da, he said. It is the block of flats right opposite. Well, luck, intuition, providence, something or somebody guided us, or I might never have seen Ruth or Heinz again. It's over there, I shouted, running down the steps. We were surprised and we looked at each other and off we went. Yes, we stood outside the door that said Kurenbach. We rang the bell wondering, if they would recognize us, would we be welcome? So was it convenient? And would Ruth remember me? Heinz, a jolly faced, fair haired, large man came to the door and he looked at us for a moment and he was speechless. It was exactly as if we'd come from another planet. And he said, Margaret, let meet Wally. Wolfgang, Wolfgang, he said, become Wendy Muta. Well, I found out after what he was saying is, Wally and Margaret, Wolfgang, Wolfgang, come. Go and get your mother. So at the time, I didn't understand it, but I got to understand what he was saying. So, but we, what we did understand was the hugs and the expression in, in Heinz's eyes and the welcome that we received. Wolfgang and Mark, our eldest, 
had gone to the store where Ruth worked to give her the news. And this slim young friend who left me in Wales many years before came running with excitement and with tears in her eyes. She had never forgotten us, neither had she forgotten the little English that was taught to her by my father. And all she kept on saying was, 50 years, Margaret, 50 years, you see me. They came to Tineshi in 1953. No, 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 no caravan, you met me. And so we did, we stayed with them. The caravan pitch was arranged immediately and taken to a friend's house. The wine and the snaps came out and we all went back to the store where Ruth worked, shopping. That was a frequently used word and almost everything that you could put our hands on went into the trolley. You like? Yes, okay, you like. All going in the trolley. Her boss in the store, he even said, when she introduced us as Wally and Margaret Vales, England, Ruth, and he said then, Ruth, no working, no working. And he told her to take time off for the length of our stay. He gave our son's presents, a toy car each. And it was such a lovely gesture. On the trams, the passengers there gave the children money and kisses. And Ruth, when Ruth said, family from England. Remember, I remember one saying, va no good, va no good. These were ordinary people of SN who had also suffered war and the aftermath. Reminiscing, your mommy two fish and chips gone a house, she said. Mm. And Ruth would say, that very nice, that very nice. Oh, yes. But there was the occasion too that we had a laugh about. My mother, uh, Ruth wanted laxatives. So my mother gave her these, this bar of chocolate laxatives. It was like a bar of chocolate. Heinz came home and he thought it was ordinary chocolate because he couldn't read, read the wrapper. So he ate it. Yeah. Well, the consequences that came about because he couldn't read the wrapper were, well, we all know. Ruth had an infectious laugh. And, but she put on a few extra pounds in the years because I had done the same. After five wonderful days, we left Essen and the Kurenbachs with the promise to return again. Nine years later, that nine years went by. And during which time, only cards and our communication with just a few words again before we returned. But this time, it was with Mark Elderson and his fiancée, Janice. This was arranged with the help of a colleague from work. She was German, Johanna. And of course she could speak German and she learned English. She worked in the town hall with us. And to her credit, she also learned fluent Welsh. Mm -hmm. And she used to get quite cross when people that could speak Welsh in the town hall would speak English to her because she wanted to show how proud she was that she had also learned Welsh. So Ruth must have spent a week baking these enormous cakes that the German make. And a we had a selection of meats even for breakfast. And that was my first time to taste pickle herrings and black bread. Wolfgang now had a, um, a girlfriend, Martina, and he had learnt a little English at school. And that was a great help. Helmut's love was a car called Herpy. Uh, he couldn't speak a word of English, neither could Heinz. But they all managed to have great fun together. They took us to Kruger Park, and this was top of the list. And there was a wonderful fountain there. It is out of this world. And when we go, there was a huge store there, huge store. 
And I don't have to look at something. And she'd say, you like? And she'd buy it. So I've got loads of ornaments, yeah. I've got a tankard, I've got a beautiful glass on um, uh, container. Uh, I've got loads of things here from Germany because I only had to look at it and say, that's nice. And she'd buy it. I had to stop doing it. So I learned that. But anyway, it was very, very nice of her. And then we went to the restaurant in the park and Ruth filled Janice's handbag with sugar to feed the ponies, the lumps, sugar lumps. But at the doorway, they fell on the floor. So you can imagine our faces were very red leaving there. <laughs> the summer festival then that is held in Gruger Park, the end of the fair, the end of the summer fair, this was an enormous affair with all sorts of rides and stands. And at the evening dance, the, the band played all English music and we danced well into the night. The bar ran right across the whole hall and there must have been about 40 barmen there. On Sunday, the 29th of August, 1977, we left Essen with Helmut Wolfgang escorting us in Herpy towards Aachen. And they gave us little teddy bears as mementos, which I've still got. They all promised to come to Wales then the following year for the wedding of Mark and Janice. So on the 12th of August, 1978, so that made me very happy because I didn't have long to wait. So we were able then to return the wonderful hospitality and because living in land, they took in the great beauty of the sea that's around us, the seashores and the tranquility of the Gower and the excitement when we toured Pembrokeshire, strolling around the beautiful parks. Park Howard, they thought was lovely. It is one of the loveliest parks I've ever been to. And, and 25 years had now gone by. So then, the next time we visited Essen was in 1987 with our youngest, Tyvion and Nicola, his fiance. And then they took us at that time. I remember Wolfgang took us to he took us for a walk and he took us to a tunnel which is, had a commemorative plaque for 50 prisoners of war that were kept there as prisoners by the Nazis and they were shot. Now the people of Essen had erected that memorial and we got to learn about the horror stories that they put up with during the war. There was no way that they wanted their granddaughter, Patricia, to experience what they and we had as citizens, ordinary citizens, put up with during that time. On the last evening, neighbours came together putting on a barbecue on the end lawn and we had great fun. We must have been about 25 there. The warmth and the welcome was felt by us. And I trust the Kudenbach's family remembered what they had received in Tanesli. This was the last time that we saw Ruth and the family. But my dearest wish was to see her again. But Heinz became unwell. Although I did hope to visit Germany again. We, we were born within months of each other in different countries, which were enemies in two world wars. While she was hiding in the cellar in Essen with her parents, as a Reich handed down young men like her brothers to train them in the army, her mother tried to protect her and her little family. If they were caught having anything to do with the Jews, they were captured and shot. Shopkeepers were not allowed to serve the Jews. Teachers were not allowed to teach to their children. Their homes were burnt and possessions taken. And 
I was at the same time in my Anderson shelter at home or singing, bless them all and run rabbit run within the hideout of Mountain Colliery in Gorsainen with my gas mask and my blankets. Or standing on the front doorstep while Swansea was blazing inferno. And then following which I was going to Greg's College Swansea in Mount Pleasant. And I would never be sure which building was in the same place as it was when I saw it before, after the Blitz that was created by her fellow countrymen. Possibly one of those on the drums giving money to my children and a, wel and a welcome saying, war no good. The city of Essen was bombed to the ground also and had, had been the result, but the result had also become something beautiful. Its shopping precinct, its parks and housing was something to be proud of. How many lessons I learned from youth? We could not speak the same language. We were from different countries, enemies in wars we had no control over. She trustingly came to live in a strange country to be with her husband, not knowing how she would cope. She laughed a lot, she cried a lot. But most of all, it is a gratitude that is expressed in every way, even without speaking the same language that knew no boundaries. It is with a feeling of elation that I came back from my 1968 holiday. I did not see Venice at that, uh, that came later. But I could tell my father, Daddy, Ruth never forgot you were wrong. Like her namesake, she was loyal and true. I gather the main, the meaning of Ruth is friendship. Ruth died in 1994 and Heinz later. Then, sadly, Helmut died. And two years ago, Wolfgang, their youngest, died. But Martina and Patricia still write to myself and my children every Easter and every Christmas time. It was the affection, gratitude, and never to be forgotten love that she radiated together with the stories she took back to her family and the neighbors in Germany of the kindness that was shown to her by the Welsh people in Llanelli, that did more to promote the warmth and friendship of our town than any ambassador or tourist guide would ever do. It was a chance meeting and opening doors of hospitality. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for doing so, some people have entertained angels without knowing it, and that's Hebrews. Yeah. And then, there was, I don't know if any of you saw it, but um, a couple of weeks ago on the television, there was two of these two elderly men, and one of them was a stretcher burner, a bearer, and he was saving the wounded, and um, he came across a German that was wounded, and his colleague said, oh, oh, let's finish him off, let's finish him off. Well, that's what they were there for, shooting Germans. Uh, and he said, no, no, he said, I'm saving him. And he saved him. And they were both on television there, their photos on television, old people, and they'd kept in contact all their lives. And I thought that was a lovely story. And Graham then, he was doing the research for, well, he did it over 10 years after he retired for um, the, the history of the Reds, so Stebony Football Club. And he did that because he was writing a book that has never been published, sadly, uh, A Hundred Years of the Reds. And he was doing it in the library and he was coming across these poems that they were mothers and sisters uh, and some soldiers were sending in to our local, they were all our, all our local, from Dwelly, from Nelly, they were putting, sending these in. And we did an evening, 2000 and, uh, 2014, uh, of these for Binia Historical Society. 
we did a few times actually. And the one that comes to my mind when reading this to you is, I did not raise my son to be a soldier. I brought him up to be my pride and joy. Who dares to put a bayonet on his shoulder to shoot some other mother's darling boy? Let nations arbitrate their future troubles. It is time to lay the sword and gun away. There would be no more wars if mothers all would say, I did not raise my son to be a soldier. And that is my story. It's a very important part of my life and a very enjoyable one. So I've shared it with you. I hope I haven't been too long. I couldn't cut my words down to make it just a short, a short few words. Margaret, thank you so much for, um, for oh, your yeah. talk. I found it very interesting. Um, I liked the poem, especially at the end. I thought that spoke uh, volumes about how we bring up our children. We don't expect them to go off and fight in a, a war to kill somebody else's child. Um, very moving. Um, oh, if, it's, it's, yeah. If you all it's like a, to unmute. Yeah. It's, a it's a collection. It's a collection. It's a collection of beautiful poems. Mm. Beautiful poems. I'm for this now. Um, I didn't want to bore you. <laughs> you weren't boring in the slightest. No, no, no. no, no. Um, anyway, uh, has anyone got any questions? Oh, somebody's on the phone with their hand up already. Anybody got their could, opinion? Anybody got their opinion? You know. And um, could I, could I just say it was a marvelous story? And thank you so much for sharing it. Yeah. 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 That, that was extremely interesting, Margaret. Really yeah. yeah. enjoyed it. Yeah. Margaret, when you were went to Germany, um, what, did you see much evidence of the devastation that had been caused by? Our, yeah. Our army. Mm. yeah, when we went the first time, when we went the first time, yes, yeah. in 1968 we did, yeah, and we went there, actually we went there before that, years before that, and yes, if I can, my memory, my memory, I've got videos of it, but um, in my memory, is it, beginning with an L it is, there is one, there is one whole village that has not been rebuilt, mm -hmm. which which was bombed by us, of course. Mm -hmm. Complete village. Um, it begins with an L. Mm -hmm. uh, and yes, and there was a cathedral then that hadn't been rebuilt. They keep it, just keeping it as it was. That's in Germany, Martha, um, was it? Yeah. Yes. You know they have something similar in, Germany, in France. Yeah. In and Germany, they some, and they have something similar in France. Don't, don't they? they have some a village similar yeah. in France as well, where they've just kept it, where they put yes, all they, the women and children in, in the church well. and yes. just kept it. Yeah. yeah, but I found they were very, you know, there was an embarrassment there because, um, you know, of, you know of the war was that they, they couldn't do enough for us. They just mm -hmm. couldn't. The only, only uh, little bit that I felt a shiver was that we went to a beer feather. And of course you had the long, long trestle tables and they all had their beers and they were singing these German songs, you know, and going back and forth. And I did have goose pimples that night, you know. I did feel a bit of goose pimples that night. Mm. Margaret, did you teach them yeah. Sust Bark then? Did you teach them Sust Bark? Pardon? <laughs> he says, did you teach did I them, teach them what? Sust Bark? Sust Bark? Did you teach the Germans that song? No! Oh no! Sust Bark? You didn't have a hope of teaching the Sust <laughs> Can you imagine how we, we were trying? Heinz, Heinz and Helmut never spoke a word. <laughs> they, they, would, they, they wouldn't speak a word. No. no. <laughs> but um, Ruth did try. Ruth did try. 
Um, yeah. Yes, and um, when when we did make when we did when we went the second time, uh, well, uh, well, with my eldest son, uh, arrangements were made then because we they knew we were coming. Uh, but Johanna, then you see, I was fortunate. I could write what I wanted to in English. She would write it in German, and I could send the whole letter to them in German to make arrangements. Yeah. So. Yeah. They would write back to me in German, and Johanna would translate to me. So that that was, you know, that made it. Well, otherwise, it would have been impossible to make the arrangements, you know. Because as I say, I still get the cards, and my and my children, mm, and my children do. As I say, and all is on it. All is okay, or mm -hmm. you know, one or two little words. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Yeah. But uh, yes, yeah. but there we are. That is um, quite an episode in my life. Mm. Mm. Lovely. Margaret, I was, quite, I was quite interesting to That's hear my what you contribution. said. I was quite interested to hear what you said about the um, German people's reaction to the Jewish people um, during the time of the Nazis. So oh, yes. What, what you're saying, quite a number oh. of the Jewish people did not agree with the Nazi party. Is that right? Oh, no. No, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't. But I've, I've just read, um, I've just uh, read, you know, my, my, my grandson in, in Cardiff, he's very interested in that. So he's been sending me books and buying me books, you know, on, the, on what was happening. And one was back in 1933, and it's called the runaway family, the runaway family. And that, of course, it is there in detail about this, this, this particular, this woman with three children. That's what the story is about. But of course, it covered a lot, everything that went on there. And yes, they, they even the, the Jew, even they are Jewish friends when they were thrown out of their own house with nothing went to the Jewish friends, even they just shielded them for a short while, but they said, you've got to go, you've got to go. And they had to go because they would be the next ones going. And then they had German friends, they are German people, especially the children, they are German friends, but those friends had to turn against them. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it was, you know, they were just thrown out in the streets. But nothing. Yeah. And if the German people, uh, you know, according to this book, befriended them, as some of them did, well, they'd have been treated the same. They'd have been thrown out and shot. Yeah. Even their own people. If they, there, the children weren't, weren't allowed to go to the school. Children were not allowed to go to school. And the, she was working the shop. One of the first thing they had to do was to sack her. Just, you know, it was yeah. no, the, the German people didn't want it. Yeah. No, yeah. no, but they couldn't do enough for us. No, yes, a lovely story. story. Very interesting yeah. story, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Are there any mm -hmm. more questions? No, well, I'm taking that as a possibly no. Um, right. thank, you, thank you so much, Margaret. It's yeah, been a wonderful Margaret, afternoon. Yeah. Um, I must yeah. admit, when I read the title um, with just a few words, I came to the conclusion I wondered what this was going to be about. And it's just <laughs> surprises something like this with a completely open mind about what you might hear. And it's been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah. 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 yeah great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Um, now, Mm -hmm. um, our next, um, our next uh, monthly lecture for June is um, by Iris Spencer, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Um, talking about being on safari. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, in a fortnight, we have a lovely Iris with us. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we'll see what safari we will take and what animals we will see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay.
thank you all for coming. Thank you, David. Okay, thank we you, David. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> bye, bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, bye. 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 bye.